Hello everybody and welcome to the, well, sort of weekly share for the Zero Shemshin. I know it's been a long time, it's now Yud Beis uh, Shvat, Tav Shin Pei Aleph. <clears throat> As you, some of you might know, I have been in the, engaged in moving to Eretz Yisrael and here I am in my new office. <clears throat> it's a little echoey, but you'll have to forgive me. This is a very special Parsha because it's Bishalach and uh, the Jews finally got released and went through the Dead, and dead Sea, whatever, the, <clears throat> the, not the Dead Sea, but the Red Sea, Yam Suf, <clears throat> and um, we're about to investigate a little bit. I'm just going to start shortly and give you a big segula this week. This is a week full of Kedusha with Parshas B'Shalach and Tobishvat, and we'll see the segula a little bit later. So I'm going to read you a little bit from the Zer Shimshon. In English, I don't even have my Sforim yet. They're still on the boat someplace in uh, maybe in Cyprus. They're due to get here some to port in about the mid, mid, first week of February. So I'm hoping to have them soon. As I shall I'll have all the books. <clears throat> now, this is, um, I'm reading from the English because I don't even have the Hebrew. <clears throat> so it says, Omar Ayiv, Erdaif Asiga, Chalek Sholo, Timlai Eimoy Nafshi. That's a passage from Bishalach. <clears throat> that we read every day in the Davani, in the Pesuk of Zimra, <clears throat> the enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoils, my soul shall be filled with them. <clears throat> the first five words in the Pesuk begin with the letter Aleph. Omar, Ayiv, Erdof, Asig, and Achalik. Five, five Alephs. <clears throat> the question is why? The Egyptian exile was supposed to last 430 years. Five times 86. 86 is the numerical value of the Shem Elohim, which is nature, and also the same uh, ha Hateva, <clears throat> the same Gemachi as Hateva. Chazal tell us that the hardships of the exile lasted for 86 years from when Miriam was born until they left Egypt. <clears throat> According to this calculation, the harsh enslavement took place only of the fifth of the time it should have lasted. We find a similar idea expressed in the Sefer Torah Chaim, which is, states that the reason for B'nai Israel were subjected to four additional exiles after their brutal time in Egypt <clears throat> was because they needed to f finish the four parts of suffering they had been spared while in Egypt. <clears throat> Why they didn't fulfill their debt while still in Egypt? Hashem saw that the Jewish people had already sunk to the 49th level of impurity, of defilement. <clears throat> and he knew that if they would be left there any longer, <clears throat> there wouldn't be any Jewish nation to redeem. He therefore re rescued them with haste. <clears throat> but the reality was that they never finished the exile and that re the debt remained. <clears throat> it's possible, suggests the Zer Shimshon, <clears throat> that our obligation to, con to consume four kazesim of matzah on Seder night for the mitzvahs of Hamoitzi and Achilas Matzah and Kairich and Afi Kaimen <clears throat> are due to the fact that Hashem hastened the exile, the end of the exile, shortening it by four parts. <clears throat> the four pieces of matzah that we hi eat hint at the four parts of the exile that we were spared by leaving early. A moment in time when we were hurried into the wilderness so rapidly that our dough didn't even have time to rise. Paroi felt the same way. He convinced him himself that he is, his extended and illogical war with the Jews was not over yet. <clears throat> Since B'nai Yisrael were missing four of their five parts of the Golos and couldn't possibly be redeemed, <clears throat> he was therefore confident that he was going to corner them by the sea and bring them back. This is what the five olives are coming to signify, the five portions of Gallus, the numerical value of Hashem's name, Elohim, multiplied five times. <clears throat> and the fact that four of those portions were, are still lacking when the Jews were redeemed. Okay, that's the end of the Zer Shimshon for this week. <clears throat> I hope you're inspired, but I'm missing the Segula. There is no Segula in this Parsha, except there's a major segula from the Rav Mendel of Rimenov, Zeichet Tzadik, Vekadiz of Rocha, that 
on Parshas um, B'Shalach, on Tuesday, which is tomorrow, <clears throat> there's a Shem, everyone should say, Shnai Mecho Echa Targum, that means read the Parsha of the Man, which is in Parsha B'Shalach, and read it two times the Hebrew, and one time the Aramaic translation. And that's a big segula for Parnassa. You can look online, there's a special prayer to say after the, before and after saying the Parsha of Man, some say it every day, but <clears throat> this is a once a year opportunity to help with your parnasa. So everybody should be matzliach and the segula and hatzlacha rabbi. Have a good tavach and a good, a good tatu and a good, a good tavach.